Hey everyone, it's DJ. Welcome to my weekly animation tips. This week, we're talking about facial animation. Nothing is that complicated when you break it down into easy steps. So facial animation, I broke it down into four steps. If you're writing things down, write down these four steps. Step one is foundation. Step two is structure. Step three is details. And step four is polish. So step one, the foundation. This is what everything is built on. And of course, you've done a lot of foundation work already in the research for your animation piece. You've got the audio file. That's the most important thing, obviously, for lip sync. You need to know what he's saying, uh, he or she is saying. You need to know how they're saying it, how fast, what the words are, everything. So you should already have your audio file, and you should have downloaded that into your brain. You should know that inside out and backwards. You should have it on your iPod, listening to it on your way home, on your way to work, during your lunch break, whatever. Know your audio file. Know exactly what they're saying, how they're saying it. Look at yourself in the mirror saying it to yourself. Videotape yourself saying it. Say it to other people. But the important thing is to say it in the mood, the character, that your character is going to be saying it in. That's the foundation. Know your scene and know what you want your character to look like when you animate it. Because if you don't have it in your head, how are you going to put it on your computer? Step two is structure. Now we need to build, just like if you're building a house, you build the structure of the house before you hang the details on it. You wouldn't lay carpet on a concrete slab before you've even put the walls up. So don't start doing details of the facial animation before you get the structure down. Okay? So the structure is very simple, open and closed, wide and narrow. Now this is popularized by Jason Osipa in his book Stop Staring, and that is an excellent book. If you don't have it already, I recommend you get that. That is Stop Staring by Jason Osipa. O-S-I-P-A. So the basic technique is open and closed, wide and narrow. So you set down the keys for your character's open and closed mouth position and the wide and narrow for the dialogue. Very simple. And a quick way to really find those open and closed positions that I found is I simply place my elbow on my desk, I place my chin on my fist, and I say the dialogue. So our dialogue for today is you need to say it at full speed. You need to say it at full speed. So you need to say it at full speed. What that does is it, my chin hits my fist, which then hits the table, and it forces my head up every time my mouth opens. So now I don't just uh, think that's when my mouth is opening, I can actually feel it. And the key is here, you, you need to say it at full speed, because watch what happens if I slow down and try and enunciate every single word. You need to say it at full speed. See, when I slow it down and I say the dialogue slowly, I tend to open my mouth on every single word, almost every single syllable. And that's not the way people talk. Imagine if people walk around going, Hey, how's it going, yo? How are you? We look like Muppets, okay? And uh, we're not Muppets. Some of us are, but anyway, that's another story. So, yeah, you need to say it at full speed. And let's break this down. Let's break this dialogue down. You need to say it at full speed. I can feel that the only time my mouth is really opening wide is on say and speed. Okay? So this, these are the structure keyframes that we should be setting down on our timeline for say and speed. Okay? Those are the two that's, that stand out right now. So those are our extremes, our keys that we're going to lay down right now, say and speed. Now we go back, you, so I can feel it opens about a quarter as much for you need, so open for you, close for n, and then eed, you need to say it at full speed. Okay, now if you're watching this right now, you might think that my jaw is opening when I say full, but see this is actually something that we're going to cover more in detail on the polish stage. It's overlapping action where my jaw is closing, but my lips are popping open. So I'm actually cushioning for the big open on speed when I say full. My jaw is actually closing, but my lip is popping open. So don't be fooled by that. That's why it's so important to rest your chin on your fist, because now you can feel that, no, my jaw is closing, even though it looks like my lip is popping open. So that's where that tip really comes in handy and really makes your animation much more accurate. We'll get more onto the overlapping action later. Okay, so now that we have the open and close down, the next part of structure is the wide and narrow. And all we do is we can either look in the mirror or we can just place our fingers on the corners of our mouth and just say the dialogue once again. And it's best to say it at full speed, but you can say it a bit slow. But if we go, you need to say it at full speed. So I can feel you, that's narrow, need, wide, to, narrow, say, wide, it, wide, at, wide, full, narrow, speed, wide. 
Now we lay those keys down on the, on the timeline, and we have the entire structure built for our facial animation. If you play this back, you'll see it looks like your character is saying it. Now, of course, don't forget the tip where you need to sometimes shift all of your keyframes between two and five frames forward. That's because we produce the mouth shape before we make the sound. So you can do that now, uh, or you can do that later. I prefer to do that now. That way my structure is sitting in the right place on my animation. But some people do it at the end. They like to put all the details on and then shift it. Whatever you're more comfortable with. I like to, to have it in the right place so that way I can play it back and I can see it. And it's going to be really exciting because we spent, what, five, ten minutes on this and already we've got the basis of our facial animation. In fact, if you're doing a low quality production or the character is off in the distance, we're done with our facial animation. Or if your character has his back to the camera because you don't want to add in all the details if your character has his back to the camera, but you still want to be able to see the jaw moving and maybe the ears moving, and you want to be able to see that this character is talking. You can see the chin moving up and down, even from behind. So now we have our structure done. We did open and closed, wide and narrow. As simple as that. Now we move on to step three, which is the details. So this is another pass of our animation. We're going to do the details. What I like to do is I like to forget about the, the mouth for now, and I move on to the eyes. And what we're doing is we're adding in emotion. And I like to start emotion on the eyes. And so I'll do the eyebrows, you know, is he happy, surprised, is he angry, or, or sad? I, I like to get that in there, and I also do eye gaze. If you haven't done that in your animation already, uh, that's up to you. Now is the time to do it, because as we layer more details on, you're going to need the eye gaze and the direction in there. So put that in now. And then I like to pull back and I look at the face as a whole, and I'll add in the smile. Is the character happy? Is the character sad? I'm going to add in the basic emotion. No fine details now, it's just broad strokes of the finer details, okay? This is, you know, the, the plaster on the walls and the carpet on the floor, but we're not hanging the pictures on the wall yet. We're just doing the rough details, filling this in to where it's a much more polished piece. And again, if you're working on lower budget productions, you're done. You've got some details in there. You've got the emotion. The character looks like he's, he or she is saying the dialogue, and now they're emoting. They're expressing the emotion of the piece with their eyebrows and with their mouth, whether they're smiling or frowning. So. With step three out of the way, now we move on to step four, and step four is polish. And this is where the real time is spent, is with polish. With polish, we can add in the character. So we've got the emotion. We've got, first of all, the character saying the lines. Then we've got the emotion of the lines. Now we're adding in the personality, the real character. For instance, does the character smile crooked? Does he have a crooked smile? And he smiles at one side of his mouth. Does the character maybe have a lazy eye, eyelid or something? And, you know, he... he is Popeye and he's like, ah, this is where we add it in. And we can adjust the mouth shapes to suit the personality and the mood of the dialogue. For instance, if your character's happy, he's going to be smiling and you might want to adjust all the mouth shapes up to where he's, he's smiling and his eyebrows are up and everything is up and positive. Whereas if he's angry, you might want to pull the corners of the mouth down and you show the bottom teeth and you have the eyelids down and even tilt the head down. Now we're modifying our animation. We're tilting the head forward and we're getting this angry look on our characters and we're really putting in the personality and the character and the real emotion that's going to really move our audience. We're putting it in now. This is also a time we can go back through and add in micro expressions. You might be familiar with those. We don't have time to cover micro expressions in this little podcast, but micro expressions are very important in animation. This is also where you add in the weight. I know a lot of people might not think of facial animation as having weight, but it does. The cheeks Everything has weight, the jaw has weight, and for instance, if we were to say like, puh, like Peter, Peter, poo, 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 you can see, if you go back and play this frame by frame, you'll see when I go, poo, 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 poo. Hopefully you're not animating a character talking about poo, but the cheeks puff out and you have overlap secondary. Also for things like when we say full speed, you have the overlap, you have the lip popping open, full, and you might even have a little bit of overlap on that. You know, this is the time to concentrate on the 12 principles, your squash and stretch, your overlap, your cushion, your weight, your arcs, because you might want the, the mouth to open in an arc by using the head, like, hey, and so you have the jaw actually forming an arc as the head moves. You might want to lead a head move with the eyebrows, like you have your character come down and then up and leading with the eyebrows. You might want to, to lead down with the eyebrows or even cushion a head move with the dialogue. So maybe he's like, what? What? And so you're cushioning that hard head move with the chin, with the jaw. And so you might need to shift some of your actual character body animation and head animation keys to really suit the dialogue. And this is where real animation, real character starts to take off.